Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. 2015 Fiat 500 Abarth, the uh, hot turbocharged version. This is the one where uh, I posted a picture a little while back with the smoke screen, 67,000 uh, miles. The turbocharger literally blew up. So, you know, the guy, the story was, uh, you know, kid in college, and uh, he said he was driving it, saw the smoke screen, he was near his apartment, then his oil light came on, he had like, you know, another two tenths of a mile to go, got it to his apartment, just parked it, called me up. Um, history of the vehicle is, supposedly had some kind of oil leak in the past that was fixed a month before this happened. So, I don't know. <laughs> All I know is right now, the turbocharger, if you wiggle the shaft, there's about half an inch of play. I think the shaft itself is either snapped in half or something. And that is causing, you know, this is the oil feed line for to lubricate the turbo. Well, that oil is getting sucked into the intake, pushed into the exhaust, and it li it's literally dripping oil out of the exhaust pipes. That's how bad it is. So, we're going to replace this sucker. Now, the OEM one, A, was on back order. B, the upgraded part was like twice as expensive, almost a grand just for this little turbo. So, the owner said, is there any other option? I'm like, well, you can try an aftermarket one. They're available, about half the price. So, for 500 bucks, we got this. I assume it's made in China, or it was shipped from China. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like it should fit. It has all the right fittings and ports and stuff. You know, there's the wastegate, actuator. So to replace this thing, it doesn't look too bad, right? It's right up here. You can see it, but OEM instructions say it's a five-hour job. Why? Because you have to obviously drain the coolant, discharge the air conditioner, disconnect everything, remove the whole front clip, you know, bumper, radiator support, then remove the con converter, remove the exhaust manifold, and then take the turbo off of that. So let's start peeling back the onion, see how it goes. I'll videotape some highlights, and then once we get the new turbo on there, we'll fill it up with oil. And we'll see the biggest smoke show you've ever seen in your life. So we got the air cleaner assembly off. That frees up some space. I'm noticing someone forgot two bolts there for this turbo support bracket. Now I don't know if they're crucial, but hey. That needs a little more juice. But I'm just going to keep peeling back the onion until we can't go any further. I have to remove this... Uh, Radiator support. So I'm taking off this heat shield. Two nuts there, three bolts there. And hey, check this out. <laughs> I wonder if that's uh, the ones that we're missing. Indeed. And there's another one right here. Apparently these are considered optional by the dealer where uh, the owner said that he had this oil leak re repaired. So we'll put these together with this thing. That's where they belong. And uh, keep going with this nut. It's, you can reach it. Just need a little Harbor Freight to the rescue. Not a big deal so far. We'll see, uh, see how far we can get just from up top. Well, maybe it's a good thing I'm taking off the uh, <laughs> the front end and the intercooler piping. I don't think that's supposed to be the oil drain, but there is a lot of oil in these components, so we might as well let them drain out. I mean, it's leaking over there. So, made a mess. But uh, I think what we can do is to avoid discharging the AC is unclip the front end and just kind of swing it over to the side like an Audi. We should have plenty of room to do what we got to do. Get this turbo out of here.
right, there's that. operation and we're so far so good I have to so the AC lines right here and right here. We don't want to stress those too much. They have two pivots but they are clamped against this piece here. So I want to relieve the stress. Maybe unclamp them in those two spots so we can pivot around around the hoses perhaps. Just give them a little freedom. But We already have more working room and we don't have to swing this all the way out, just enough to get the turbo. Because if I discharge this, it's going to be really expensive. Well, we're getting pretty close. Uh, I got the catalytic converter downpipe assembly just loose. It's flexing on the flex pipe there. But the goal is to get to these four mounting bolts that attach the turbo to the manifold. I don't want to take the manifold off if I don't have to. So this is as far as the bumper assembly is going to come out without bending these, these AC lines. So it's kind of like unbolt, move away, make enough room, but it's not going to actually detach. What do we see with the turbo? We see a complete mess. If I try to spin this side, that impeller is not spinning, so the shaft is indeed snapped right in half. And you can see where the oil has been injected through the shaft bearing into the exhaust pipe. It is completely full of oil. That's, uh, that kind of explains the, the smoke screen. <laughs> so we're going after the right part here. Get that out of the way. And this will be, at least you can move it around, try to get to those bolts. Man, this thing is like a puzzle that can only be disassembled one way. <laughs> so, on the last of the four pedestal bolts, and sometimes the nut comes off, sometimes the stud comes out, but either way it's a 13 millimeter, and I found that um, a ratcheting flexible flex head gear wrench is kind of the only way to get to them. So I'm holding it up onto the nut with a pick, like so, and you can see some uh, glove. the gloves were uh, sacrificed in this process, and just, see there, the stud is coming out, not the nut, you can get a couple clicks, I think it should be free. Oh, oh man. All right. Sweet. So much oil. Look, that's the exhaust manifold. Filled with oil. That's why it's gonna make a lot of smoke when it starts up. That's gonna be fun. So oil feed line, oil return line, coolant 
feed line and then coolant return line actually took off all the way. There it is. We're just going to put everything back together with fresh gaskets, fill it up with fluids, and yeah, it's going to be fun to start this thing up. So it's time to install the new turbocharger. So I transferred most of the studs to the new one except for this one. The threads got messed up. Luckily, the aftermarket kit comes with replacement studs, but I prefer to reuse the originals because they look a little beefier and they have uh, this hex for easy installation. So we got this one in. Let's, uh, let's put it on the car. All right, things are going pretty smoothly. All the lines are connected to the turbo. It's uh, mounted on the pedestal securely. We have our wastegate actuator. It looks nice. It spins really smoothly, no play at all. So that's promising. Uh, I put a new oil filter in it and I want to drain the oil, make sure there are no sparkles because it was run very low on oil. Just in case to uh, have to be on the safe side. I didn't see any sparkles in the oil filter. So let's drain out the oil. Put in some 5W40 synthetic Rotella just like the cap specifies. So this is all that came out. Maybe a quart and a little bit. And keep in mind, when I first diagnosed this car, I saw there was no oil, so I dumped two quarts into it. There's still nothing on a dipstick. We ran it for about, I don't know, a minute and shut it down, and this is how much is left. So that thing was pumping oil into the turbo right down the exhaust pipe. Uh, pretty, pretty insane. So this could have ended really badly if the owner kept driving it for longer than he did. Um, don't see any metal sparkles, just dark, dark oil. Um, so yeah, we'll fill it up with some fresh oil, put it back together, and uh, fire it up. Yeah, it definitely feels good to <laughs> fill this thing up with some fresh oil. It was starving. So it takes exactly four quarts. And then about a gallon of coolant. So very small engine, small displacement, 1.4 liter and gallon of oil, gallon of coolant, 160 horsepower I think out of a 1.4 so pretty impressive with the turbocharger and it must weigh under 2,000 pounds. I mean this thing is small. Alright she's all back together. Everything all nuts and bolts accounted for. Uh, let's uh, scan it, clear out the trouble codes and then do the smoke show startup. Alright, so we have 11 modules here. Uh, some stuff was unplugged, so I'm not really worried about all the red stuff. It has 67 480 miles on it. And let's see here. Front fog lights, yep, those are unplugged. Side marker lights, blah blah blah. Turbocharger boost pressure not detected mechanical. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Crankcase pressure sensor circuit low. Convergence telematic module. Uh, some airbag stuff. All right, let's clear them all out. All right, so the only three codes in the car that are left are in the BCM. Humidity sensor, stoplight circuit open, oh we gotta check his brake lights, DRL front parking light right circuit open. Huh. I'm gonna plug everything in. Well, I guess we'll see which one's out. Uh, let's check. Yep, that's a smart car. Gotta replace that bulb. start up. Well, there's the taillight assembly. Some disassembly required, I guess. Alright, so 
Right. Yeah, it's burnt out. 11.57. Alright, now we got brake lights. Boom. It's fired up. drain pan under that exhaust. That's where the oil went. Unbelievable. We got an oil leak. <laughs> I've never seen that before. You hear it bubbling. Well, we'll let it vent out a little bit. Let me park it over there. Smoke show Fiat. Sounds good. Well, might as well take it for a rip. Uh, only drained like half a quart of coolant or oil. That's insanity. Eco index. smoking for a little while. <laughs> There's a cyclist gave me a dirty look. <laughs> I can hear the turbo working. Oh yeah. Smokescreen city. Clear up. Let's see how to turn this fan on. Make sure the heat works. Make sure the wipers work. She'll do in sport mode. Seems to have cleared up all the smoke. It's angry, it's angry. Happy with 
progress footage. You can tear apart the old turbo and see what caused the failure. I mean, either lack of lubrication or it just failed and then spit all the oil out and then caused a lack of lubrication. So, we'll see. Thanks all for watching. This is a fun one. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Looks a little uh, oily right here. Where is that coming from? The valve cover gasket? Dripping onto the exhaust, making a smoke show. The owner said that they, uh, right before this happened, they fixed some oil leak. Maybe they didn't fix anything. Interesting. Well, I took the Fiat for Another spin after tightening just this one valve cover bolt. I don't see a drop of oil, there's no smoke, so the owner's gonna take it. I told him, check your oil once a week, let me know if anything changes, should be good to go. So, thanks a lot for watching, we'll see you next time, bye-bye. All right, let's tear this old turbo apart. I wanna show the owner what the carnage is inside. Maybe we'll find something interesting. Definitely a broken shaft. And uh, we'll look at the bearings. And you know, the plain bearings in there. Let's see if they're all scored up. These things don't seem to... You know, it's pretty early for a turbo failure. How do these come apart? <laughs> Let's try to put it in a vise. See, what, see if anything comes off. There we go. So that's the intake side. Okay. Man, that is a skinny shaft. Wow. The bearings don't look bad at all. I think it rides on, you know, it just sheared off. You see the impeller is completely wasted. That's been hitting the uh, inside of this. We get to the exhaust side. Hmm. Let's see if we can knock this guy off. There we go. They're brass bushings and they're lubricated. So oil feed is up here, drains down to the drain and then the coolant also passes through here to cool the, cool the unit. So there's what remains of the impeller. Ah, oh, that's ugly. Must have uh, kept spinning. 
after it broke, so this is not supposed to come apart. So let's take the nut off, get this off, and then I'm guessing take it out the, the exhaust side. So once this fell apart, then the oil is just squirting into both sides, the intake and the exhaust side. Um, yeah, so luckily the owner didn't keep going too far and saved his engine. Oh yeah, you can see some car engine there. So, I don't know, post in the comments if you've seen this failure before on Fiat's or other small turbos. Um, first one I've seen really that was, you know, less than 100,000 miles and that was this <laughs> obvious with the smoke show. Uh, appreciate everyone watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.